Hello everyone, I'm Alan from Technology Moments. Welcome back to our videos. For many years, we have been listening to many arguments about how networking speeds have been increasing, and that could not be any more true. However, it's only until now that devices like the one we're about to show you have become readily available for consumers, and by the way, they are finally being offered at the price that people are going to be able to implement them in their networks. There are important aspects to consider, as we're about to show you. We're talking about this 5 gigabit per second Ethernet adapter that connects to your computer through a Type-C port that, as you may know, these ports are capable of handling up to 10 gigabit per second easily. I wonder why still such networking adapters are not commercially available yet. Yes, you heard right, 5 gigabit per second, 5G base T. It is important to note right here that you're going to need specific hardware for you to implement higher speed networks. But, as you're about to prove, it's easier than you thought. Ok, so first, the theory as always. Why the need of implementing 5 gigabit per second networks? If you handle, for example, huge multimedia files, gigantic network backups, ultra-high definition video creation and storage, huge NAS devices serving convergent users, and similar scenarios like high-demand internal web or file servers, you may be in need of this type of networks. These specific devices, of course, are intended to be used by network clients and computers that normally are equipped with 1 gigabit per second adapters or just Wi-Fi adapters, which is very common nowadays in ultra-thin laptops, and that is one of the reasons why we have made so many videos about docking stations. There are three components in any network interface, that would be the network interface card, or the NIC, media, which may be the network cabling, say for example fiber optics, copper, and at the other end, another network interface card. As the name network suggests, there are traffic handlers in the middle, often called concentrators or hubs. Their most common commercial name? Switches. In the particular case of Wi-Fi, where no physical medium is required, such network media is often referred to as unguided media. If you want to implement a higher than 1 gigabit per second network, all components in your network must comply with the standard that you're gonna implement. 1 gigabit per second for the NIC, for the media, the switches, routers, basically everything in your network. Let's remember that routers are basically switches with a gateway. So as you can see, it's not like you're gonna change the network adapter and your whole network is gonna be faster. You have to involve your clients, the switch, the cable, and the other client. And if you're one of the lucky persons having a greater than 1 gigabit per second internet connection, also your router. For example, all modern Wi-Fi 7 routers involve a 2.5 gigabit per second interface to your network, as Wi-Fi 7 is capable of delivering such speeds as we've seen in recent videos. So this is what your network should look like if you want to take advantage of 2.5 or 5 gigabit per second networks. For this particular workshop, and to see how beneficial it might be for you to implement faster networks, and particularly this adapter that we're testing today, a 5 gigabit per second network interface over USB Type-C. We're going to use the following hardware. One computer running a fairly recent hardware that will act as a server with a 10 gigabit per second Ethernet adapter. If you, for example, expect to have a 5 gigabit per second transfer speed, of course, your computer must have a good hardware. This to support such transfer rates. So at least you're going to need SSDs and preferably NVMEs. If you expect, for example, to extract at a high speed from your clients, also good hardware is going to be needed, as you'll see in a moment. I started by connecting this uh, adapter to my laptop. This is a Core i7 12th generation laptop with an NVMe at a PCI Express port. However, single drive for the operating system and for my transfer tests that you're about to see. Not the best scenario, but it'll work. All this is using a QNAP 10 gigabit per second and 2.5 gigabit per second ports like you may have watched in a recent review for this particular switch. An excellent choice for smaller but fast networks. Auto negotiation of the adapter worked flawlessly at 1, 2.5 and 5 gigabit per second. We're gonna transfer from here to here where we're gonna run speed test servers in both machines to see how they behave. These are the speeds from the server to my laptop. Not exactly 5 gigabit per second, even when it links at such speed. Tests were consistent again and again. Let's run the tests, swapping the client and the server roles. Continue to be approximately the same. Ok, so now let's go to the practical example. This is what it takes to transfer this huge 32 gigabyte file 
through the network at 1 gigabit per second. This means the most common networking speed nowadays, a little over 5 minutes. This is what you expect transferring the same file with a 2.5 gigabit per second network connection. It took over 2 minutes and 20 seconds. And now using this 5 gigabit per second adapter. As for real transfer speed, it shouldn't actually be 5 gigabit per second, but 4 to 4.2 gigabit per second. This is what we got transferring that same 32 gigabit file in exactly 1 minute 15 seconds. Pretty good for a Type-C adapter and performance improvement speaks for itself. We're talking about 5 minutes compared to 75 seconds. Still, this is a very interesting upgrade to performance. Let's keep in mind that if you are going to transfer data to the system disk, it might be severely affected if, like mine, when I run the first two tests, it was completing its Windows update. Rookie mistake, I know. Maybe the most important aspect to consider right here is that a certified Category 5E cable will suffice, upgrading your switches and adapters without touching the cable layouts that may be a very attractive alternative for most, boosting the whole performance of your network. Here we tested it with 30 meter certified CAT 5E cable, like we keep saying, widely used around the world, and here with a coiled, not the best way to use it, same Belden CAT 5E cable at a 100 meter run, linked very quickly, connected and transferred very well. Ok, so what this all basically means is that you might not be taking advantage of your current cabling infrastructure, running gigabit networks when you could very well be upgrading it to 5 gigabit per second at least. We have even, for example, been able to run short distances of CAT 5E cable at 10 gigabit per second. By the way, you will not find a 5 gigabit per second switch. You will get a 10 gigabit per second switch that negotiates speed at 5. Ok guys, that was all for today's episode. A lot of our followers had been asking about this uh, regarding 5 gigabit per second networks. So here it was our video. We really hope that it was as informative as it was intended. Your kind support to our channel, liking this video and subscribing to it for more great content. See you next time.